<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how are y'all doing today? We're back and we're recapping the Cleveland Guardians and the Detroit Tigers game. We're back in the home setup. It's technically like, I mean, it's a temporary setup, which is kind of sad to think about. But we're back, man. It's kind of a spooky vibe. I'm really liking it. The bed might not. I mean, actually, no, the bed, the bed doesn't look that terrible. Uh, let, let's get straight into this Cleveland Guardians versus Detroit Tigers recap. I also want to let y'all know we're going to be doing a live radio broadcast of the San Diego Padres and the LA Dodgers game tomorrow. So if you want to tune in, uh, watch the TV broadcast, tune into the live stream. I'd appreciate it if you tune in. I have to uh, immediately talk about this Guardians versus Tigers game number four. I'm currently uh, keeping an eye on the Yankees and Royals game. We're going to make a video and breakdown on this game tomorrow, but I have to initially just get my thoughts out. It's fresh in my mind. So the, the Cleveland Guardians extend this series. Game number five is coming on, what day is today? Uh, Thursday. It's coming on Saturday. Um, or wait, is it Saturday? Yeah, it's going to it's gonna come on Saturday. So Reese Olsen and Tanner Bybee started this thing off for uh, both teams. And in the top of the first inning, Cleveland attacked Reese Olsen early. Steven Kwan and Kyle Manzardo are going to single off of Reese Olsen. Uh, two fastballs and really good swings. Steven Kwan really setting the tone. And Kyle Manzardo, really good A.B. Uh, in the two-hole, a young guy. And he gets a low fastball and drills it into right center field. So first and second, no outs. And Jose Ramirez up to the plate. Really big at bat right here. And Reese Olsen, uh, after getting hit on two fastballs, is going to go change up, change up, change up. Jose Ramirez, one of them I think was drilled foul. Really hit hard, almost a home run. Um, and he's going to continue to get early, get early out in front of that change up low in the strike zone. Reese Olsen is out going to opt to go to a back to another fastball. I think 94 miles an hour low in the strike zone. And Jose Ramirez is going to get under it and pop up a frustrating at bat for Jose Ramirez as he felt like he was on a lot of his pitches, but he's going to just miss that fastball. I really like the sequence from Reese Olsen, uh, obviously going away from the change up because Quan and Manzardo hit that, but uh, being able to change up, change up, and then set up his fastball and be able to get out the out. And then Josh Naylor following that Jose Ramirez at bat is going to strike out on a changeup. Reese Olsen, that's probably his best pitch, is that changeup and a really, really good pitch. I think back-to-back -back changeups to Josh Naylor. So two really good sequences to uh, two of the Cleveland Guardians' most dangerous hitters. Lane Thomas coming up to the plate, and Lane Thomas' first pitch gets a fastball and drills it into right field. Stephen Kwan scores, and another Lane Thomas hit against Reese Olsen. Shout out to uh, Lane Thomas. In the first game, he hit a three-run shot versus Reese Olsen. First pitch ambush again. And in this game, he does the same thing. Lane Thomas uh, has been really, really good with the bat uh, in the second half. Really struggled initially when he got traded to Cleveland. But uh, Lane Thomas, really good AB, RBI single. And, and the Guardians are going to uh, start the scoring off with a run in the first inning. We take it to the bottom of the second inning. And Tanner Bobby, uh, in the first inning, really, the command didn't look great, but... Uh, didn't get into any trouble, but in the second inning, he really loses the fastball command. They showed a, a graphic on screen where it was just fastballs, 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 up and away, up and away, up and away. He was just missing with his fastball, could not get it in the strike zone, and loads the bases with no out. The Tigers, with Colt Keith coming up to the plate, he is going to fly one into center field. The runner at third base is going to be able to score. The runner at second base is going to hold at second base as – uh, Parker Meadows throws it into third base. And then Jake Rogers coming up to the plate. He, I think, is going to get a middle-middle slider, line it to shortstop, and it is going to be right at Brian Rocchio at shortstop. He's going to flip it to second base and a double play to get out of this second inning with only one run allowed. Really massive for Tanner Bobby in an inning that he could not throw strikes. To be able to only allow one, one run with bases loaded, really, really big. Uh, Tanner Bobby. Uh, let me let me see his final stat line for Bobby. But Bobby overall uh, pitched pitched a pretty solid game. I thought four innings, four four hits, two runs, uh, three walks, three strikeouts. I thought the stuff looked pretty good. Again, it was really just the command of his fastball. Let's take this game to the top of the fifth inning, where Jose Ramirez off of Sean Hannafy, who came in in relief for Reese Olson, is going to crush one into deep left field. Jose Ramirez batting from the right side against the lefty. I remember in this inning, the first two uh, hitters got out and I was like, Sean Hannafy, a really, really tough at bat. I think it was two lefties in uh, Stephen Kwan and Kyle Manzardo. And actually I was noting, I, I remember I noted 
David Fry did not get pinched hit for in that situation with the lefty coming in. They opted to keep Kyle Manzardo in that situation. I'm like, it d- didn't really seem like a good decision. Then Jose Ramirez next at bat hits a bomb to put the Cleveland Guardians up two to one. A really, really good pitch. It was off a changeup versus Sean Hannafy. We take it to the bottom of the fifth inning, and Zach McKinstry is going to go the other way versus Tanner Bybee. Lead things off here in the fifth inning, and Stephen Vogt immediately after this home run occurs, he is going to take out Tanner Bybee. Uh, ended up not being a good decision to keep him in. Really not a terrible pitch. 94 up and away. If Tanner Bobby didn't have that at bat, I mean, one run, uh, uh, four innings, like that's not a bad start at all. But this run, of course, is going to hurt him. And Zach McKinstry, a really good swing going the other way uh, to tie this game up. And that is going to uh, put in Kate Smith, I'm pretty sure, who came in. And, and now we're both in these bullpens, two of the best bullpens in baseball, and it really got interesting these last couple innings. So we take it to the top, bottom of the sixth inning. And Kate Smith, still in this game, Kate Smith had a dominant fifth inning when he came in for Tanner Bybee. And Car- Kerry Carpenter is going to get a broken bat single. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, the shades are coming on. I'm having a little trouble with bright lights right now. So we're going to look cool and swaggy with my, my, my sunglasses. So Kerry Carpenter, broken bat single. Versus Cade Smith is going to start it off. Cade Smith, again, dominated. His fastball is maybe the best in baseball. On the broadcast, they were like, Cade Smith has the best fastball in baseball. He is a really dominant fastball. I don't know. He's like 6'5", but he gets incredible extension. And he is just pounding, pounding fastballs. Every single hitter is late. Kerry Carpenter was late on this pitch, but was able to uh, just jam it into left field. And they were talking about the broadcast, how that felt like a home run just because Cade Smith has been so dominant out of the Cleveland Guardians bullpen. And then... Uh, we are going to see uh, Matt Veerling come up to the dish, and he is really going to get decimated. It was really, I think it was a fastball that he was late on, and then he goes slider one strike. I think it was 1-1, one, one, and Matt Veerling way out in front of that slider. And then he comes back 1-2, another slider, Matt Veerling out in front. Really with that dominant fastball that he could not catch up to, you're sitting fastball, and then you see that slider, and you just cannot do anything with it. So uh, with one, uh, one away here, Riley Green going to come up to the plate, and he's going to work a walk. So set up first and second, one away versus Kate Smith. Again, Kate Smith to this point. I can't accentuate how dominant Kate Smith at this point was looking. And the, the Tigers putting together base runners with one away. We're going to see Juan Seal Perez. I think at this point, Hunter Gaddis came into this game. Yes, Hunter Gaddis in this game. And Juan Seal Perez is not going to hit it hard. Uh, 71 miles an hour off the bat, but he's going to jam it into a left field, I'm pretty sure. The top of the seventh inning, David Fry is going to respond, man, with a two-out, two-strike, two-run bomb. I guess <laughs> the Cleveland Guardians are pumped up. Brian Rocchio, I remember. Um, I forgot. I think Brian Rocchio had a frustrated at bat beforehand. And after this run, it, I mean, you could just see the excitement. and like, let's go. Let's go, baby. I just made a mistake. But David Fry comes through in a pinch hit opportunity. Come on, David. David Fry's been electric. A really good swing. Fastball, bottom of the zone versus Bo Brisky. Bo Brisky, one of the better relievers out of the Tigers bullpen. It's really, it's Bo Brisky, Will Vest. Those two guys are really dominant. We take it to the top of the eighth inning. The the Guardians up four to three. Now we got our bullpen in. Hunter Gaddis, Tim Heron, Emmanuel Classe coming in to, to close this down. So Will Brennan in the top of the eighth inning is going to drill a two-out double uh, versus Jackson Job, um, who, who they put in in this inning. And uh, this was almost a really good play by Juan Cilio Perez in, in right field. Initially, I thought that hit, I hit off his glove, but he misses it. Will Brennan cruises into second base. And then we're going to see Colt Keith with a phenomenal play at second base. Uh, who is batting? At this point, I'm not actually, I think it was Andres Jimenez who was batting and, and he gets one, uh, a ground ball to the left side. Cole Keith full extension is going to save a run from scoring, keeps this ball game at four to three heading into the bottom of the eighth inning where Tim Heron comes in and he gets hit hard by the Detroit Tiger. Riley Green single, Andy Abanez, uh flies a deep fly ball into, into right field. Um, Will Brennan's able to make the play on the track. Andy Abanez, a, a lefty matchup, a lefty killer. We've seen it in this playoff run. Uh, gets a fastball. I thought this ball could potentially could, uh, could have gone at, uh, off the bat, but 
Uh, then we're going to see Juan Seal Perez once again come through with a single. We're going to see Juan, uh, Tim Heron come out of the game. And with first and second one away, Emmanuel Classe is going to enter this game. The lefty Zach McKinstry and Trey Sweeney are going to get absolutely decimated by the best closer in baseball. Emmanuel Classe, all cutters in this, in this eighth inning. Cutter, 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 cutter. Uh, first two pitches, cutters to McKinstry, 100 miles an hour. He's going to get jammed to second base, move the runners over to second and third base. Now with Trey Sweeney up, we saw Trey Sweeney get a big single to set up the Carey Carpenter home run in game number th two. Game number two, game number two, Carey Carpenter, big home run. And then uh, uh, Trey Sweeney uh, in this at-bat is, is going to have no luck. There was, I think, two times where he chased Cutter upstairs, not really close, and, and Emmanuel Classe just blows Cutters by him. On his uh, last at-bat where he did get a hit, he got a hit on an inside Cutter, but he was not scared to once again go back to the Cutter inside, a pitch that he trusts, and he was able to escape a big eighth-inning rally by the Detroit Tigers. We take it to the top of the ninth inning and the Cleveland Guardians put together something against Will Vest. Brian Rocchio and Stephen Kwan, really great swings. I feel like this ninth inning really exemplified why the Cleveland Guardians are so fun to watch. Brian Rocchio has had such great swings in this postseason. He lines a single up the middle and then Stephen Kwan uh, against Jackson Job, who uh, got hit on the changeup earlier. They were really hitting Jackson Job hard. Um, they, they put together a rally first and third and we're going to see a safety squeeze with two outs. Um, actually, I think there was one out at this point. I'm not 100% sure. But David Fry coming up to the play, who obviously hit a home run earlier in this game, is going to put down a safety squeeze. I think at this point, Will Vest comes into the game. And first pitch safety squeeze, Brian Rocchio hustling home an incredible slot. A really good play on it coming in, Will Vest. And he's going to toss it home. Brian Rocchio slides to the left, gets the hand in just a tad before Jake Rogers can place the tag. And the Cleveland Guardians have a 5-3 to three lead. Now, we take it to the bottom of the ninth inning. Now, the Cleveland Guardians up 5-3. to three. Emmanuel Classe coming in to close it down. First at bat, Justin Henry Malloy comes off the bench, absolutely crushes one into left field for a leadoff double. Let's go, Detroit. After that, Manuel Classe is once again, cutters inside, cutters inside, cutters inside. We're going to see a ground ball to second base, moves the runner over to third base, another ground ball to this time first base, and Manuel Classe has to cover. He makes the play, and then I think he's going to strike out uh, the, the final hitter. Uh, he is going to strike out the final hitter to end this ball game. Emmanuel Classe able to shut it down. The Cleveland Guardians get a really big win. Stephen Kwan had a really good day at the plate. Um, David Fry, massive home run. Jose Ramirez had a really great, he had really good at-bats. A lot of foul balls that were absolutely crushed. And, and the Cleveland Guardians tied this series up. I'm so pumped to watch game number five on, uh, again, Saturday. And I'm going to go watch the New York Yankees game. Oswaldo Cabrera really, oh, that's John Birdie at first base. Incredible double play by the Yankees. They just turned Garrett Coles in the middle of throwing an absolute gem. Six innings, a five and two thirds at this point, 67 pitches, no runs. And we're going to see the Yankees. Actually, the bench is clearing. I don't know what's happening. I guess there was an incident in the second base. But I'm going to go watch this game. Appreciate y'all so much for watching. <clears throat> oh, yeah, the benches are fully cleared. Okay, I don't know what's going on. I don't think it's that serious. I don't think anyone's uh, really that mad. But uh, stay tuned and, and join me for a live stream on uh, tomorrow where we're going to stream the game number five between the Padres and the Dodgers. Very, very excited. And appreciate y'all for watching again. I'm a little bit sick right now. Um, I, I did sustain a head injury, so I might <laughs> I might sound a little bit off. Off, a little bit off, a little bit off. But we're good. I appreciate y'all so much. Have a great day. And, and we love baseball.